Okay. Uh, Ms. James, you've been performing and recording for many years. Who are some of your earlier influences in the music business? Ray Charles and uh, Billy Holiday. See, I got laryngitis and, oh. and I got to work tomorrow in uh, uh -huh. Jones Beach. Oh, dear. What, what, what was your first big break in the business? 1954, I guess it was, in Los Angeles with Johnny Otis. And can I ask you, what do you think is common with blues and jazz? How do they relate to one another? One is downtown and one's uptown. Could you say that, Starley? Could you say... One is downtown. No, say the difference between. The difference between blues and jazz. One is downtown, and then those jazz guys took it uptown. It's the same thing. How do you explain this gigantic new interest in blues? Well, it's kind of like in uh, the 50s. When rock and roll, it was rhythm and blues, and when rock and roll came along, it was like, it was the same thing. It was, it was blues then, and it was pulled from that, and now it's just that everybody's intensifying the blues and making it really fun. Everybody has their favorite Etta James tune. What are your favorites? Of my songs? I guess Sugar on the Floor. I can't think. Sugar on the Floor is the main one that I can relate to. I got one more question. How has being a woman affected your career, considering the blues has always been male-dominated? You know, we've always had men doing the blues, not constantly. Well, I think that's the thing, because it was like, um, women are like supposed to be too prissy and too cool, too nice, and housewives and things. It's just like in the old days when they said that women, women couldn't smoke. But now it's like, it's kind of like a women's, at least I'm a, I'm, an, I'm a feminist, I'm not like carried away. But I like to do anything that a guy does. In that way, um, I can sing songs about getting knocked down and drug. I can sing a song about hitting a guy across the head with a beer bottle, <laughs> stuff like that. Let me ask you one, one more question, if I may. Uh, last year, Jerry Mulligan was, was very extremely adamant about the electronic influence into jazz and, and the blues, you know. He feels that the music does got to come from your gut, from your stomach, from your soul. And an electronic instrument doesn't do that. How do you feel about that? Well, he's right. Um, but electronic instruments are needed now for one thing because high-tech sound. But far as now, synthesizers and things, that only puts too much toys and too much um, techniques in it. You know what I mean? Technical things. But you got to have it. You got to have it because you got to have your sounds got to be up to date. You can't sound like you came from the 30s or the 40s. You got to talk about the same things. And, uh, you know, blues to me is like, it's like a spiritual feeling is what happens. Everybody feels good. A spiritual feeling with a down-home message. And usually people can really relate to that. They like that. I mean, they will come out of the closet for that. Like you can say, hey, feel like breaking up somebody's home. Somebody real cool or nice will go, oh, how dare you say that? But I mean, it's the truth. People think about it every day. You just I talk about the things that are real. I'm not going to say fly me to the moon and let's dance among the stars. I'm going to say, you know, hey, let's meet in the hallway and stop six motel and Get it on, right? <laughs> one more question. Who, 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 one, just give me one more, if I may. Who was the major influence in your life in music? Billy Holiday and Ray Charles. They, they were your major influence? Yeah, so that goes to show you, you, you just Billy. say my, the major influence in my well, life? My was. major influence in life was Billy Holiday and Ray Charles. we got to go. she got to go. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you.